Well, I suppose the letters are kind of the backbone of the of the film's narrative. Um, the letters are the letters she wrote to her only confidant, really, who is a, a Roman Catholic priest, a priest called Father von Exem, and which express her terrible doubts about her faith. Um, now, everybody thinks of Mother Teresa as someone, you know, who was the the the, the embodiment of of Christian faith, but in fact, she felt abandoned by God for many decades, and this caused her a lot of pain and a lot of loneliness. Um, she talks about God as though she's talking about a husband or a lover. Um, and so I think few people know that about her and that sits at the center of the film. But the film also explores a lot of, you know, the story of how she came to work with the poor and so on. I think, well, as I say, I think for her, God was like her, you know, her loved one, her beloved, her husband, or, or whatever name you like to give it. And she writes very much as though she is, um, you know, she's been abandoned. She's woken up one morning and her husband's gone. I mean, that's th those are the sorts of, you know, that's the kind of vocabulary she uses. Um, and of course, the pressure on her. She became a very public figure and very famous for the for the Christian identity she had. That that must have caused her a lot of private anguish. Um, and and these letters, I think, she was terribly concerned that nobody read them or saw them. Um, and so this is all, this is sort of partly what the film is revealing, I think. And part, of the, part of the reason they're canonizing her now is because she, you know, because of this crisis of faith that she kept going for, for I think, about 40 years in spite of it. That's a lot of, that's a lot of, of why they are now canonizing her or try, trying to. Well, I think, uh, gosh, that's an interesting question. I mean, you know, it was quite a big stretch for me to play somebody with this all-embracing um, commitment to a sort of celibate monastic life because I'm, I'm, I'm a mum with lots of children and I, you know, live very much in the world. And so... Um, but I, I, could, I could connect with her very much on... on on her response to the poor, because I think a lot of people have that response, and she just got up and did something about it, you know. Um, some, of the, some of the time it was tough filming um, in, in India because we were filming in a real slum, and there, were, there was poverty there, uh, which I had never witnessed before. I mean, people living with disabled children in tiny tin huts with water swilling around on the floor with, I mean, less than nothing. Um, people who, who received us with such warmth and courtesy and kindness, it was really sort of humbling. Um, but sometimes I felt a bit overwhelmed by the extent of the poverty in India and being right in amongst it every day. Oh, I think uh, lots of things. I mean, she was very quite quite worldly and quite political in lots of ways. I think people don't realize that, you know. She was quite tactical. Um, she wasn't always entirely truthful about things if it didn't. She she knew how to play the, the press. I mean, I think she was very good at her own PR in a way, and she had to be in order to achieve what she needed to achieve. So I kind of admire her for that, but it's a, it's a less known thing about her. I mean, the main the main surprise of the film is this sort of desperate loss of faith, this struggle with with belief, um, which I think few people would think about. Um, but she was a great mixture of things. You know, she was partly very uneducated. She was partly highly sophisticated. She was uh, very very tough with her sisters, with her her young nuns. Um, but she had to be. They had a lot of work to do. But she was also gentle and compassionate to the destitute. So she's she's a whole mix of things. You know, and that that's really the the revelation.